Good morning, modern steaders. Woke up to a little chilly morning this morning. It's 39 degrees out. Supposed to get into the high 50s today. Morning, Figaro. Uh, you never know where you're gonna find that cat. I let Hope sleep in the barn with the other goats last night, so hopefully all went well. We'll find out. They've been getting along a lot better. How'd you girls all do last night, huh? Hope? Did you manage? You look good. Don't let them boss you around. She gets right in there with them during feeding time. The older goats boss you around. Be nice. Even though Hope's the low goat on the totem pole, she doesn't let that bother her. She gets right in there for feeding time. She knows when to stay around, when to stand up, but she also knows when to run and hide, and she's not afraid of it, which I think is awesome. That she's very capable of being able to get away from it when she needs to, and she'll get right in there at the same time. Once she gets a little bit bigger, I think all the other goats are gonna be in for it. I think she's gonna be the boss of the herd when she gets older. We went and did a factory tour of the facility where they made our barn kit. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it right here. It went up on Saturday. That was such a great time being able to go and take a tour of the factory. Dominic, the owner, was awesome, and he gave the Modern Steaders a coupon code for 10% off any orders. There'll be links in the description for that down below. Good morning, guys and girls. I didn't do my job last night, did I? We should still have plenty of water in the rainwater collection system. Oh yeah, we're still filled right up to the top. Let's dump out the water and start all over again. There, I like to keep it clean. It was a lot of fun and very interesting to see how our kit is made. The owner of the company, Dom, was saying that they get all their wood from Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and New York. There's a good possibility that some of the logs from our property that was logged last year made it into our barn kit. That's pretty wild to think that. If you guys haven't seen the videos of us getting our property logged, I'll put a link to that playlist right here. These meat chicks are looking pretty fat and happy. They've doubled their feed consumption in the last couple of days. You said at 1 30 in the morning last night some chicks woke you up. Well, I wonder if I, I wonder if this is what you heard. Can I see in there? Okay, open oh, Whoa! Look at there's three in there. Oh four. Four is gonna be hatching out. Look at that little gray one. One's black we got two black copper morons. Oh fun. And one Easter egg layer oh, so far goodness. and another Easter egg layer. I don't know if that was what it was. Maybe it got them worked up because they were all like moving around and I'm like, why are they up? Shouldn't they be sleeping? Must Maybe it got. Yeah. yeah. They're early. You want to see them? Yeah. Ooh, that one's a gray. Yeah. I, th 
I'm guessing that the gray one is the olive egg layer, yeah. and the darker one's the copper marons. So hopefully later today we'll have a few more hatched out. Yep. Yeah. Now we get to go do a job that we haven't been able to do for six months. It's not the best job on the farm, but it's exciting to be able to do it. <laughs> it's been a long winter. Now we can drive right up to New York City with the Kubota and get rid of all the bedding. The job that needs to get done. One thing I'm noticing this year and I'm very happy with is we switched up our bedding. We used wood shavings, we used straw, and we used hay. We kind of layered it. By doing that, it's not clumping together and the, the chickens are actually breaking it down nicer. So it'll be interesting to see if this composts a lot faster or not. Either way, it's making it a lot easier to clean out the coop. The carbon's combining better with the manure. So it keeps the coop cleaner and smelling fresher longer. Load number three. I'm guessing we're gonna have five total. Leave it in the comments down below how many loads you think we're gonna get out of New York City. Oh, 
<laughs> load number three down. Let's go dump this, we'll come back and I'd say two more loads at the max. chicken or two. My guess is she was looking to get back into New York City to lay an egg. Quick, go over here. There you go, gotcha. All right, load number four. <laughs> so close to finishing it up. I'll have to come back and get like a quarter of a bucket load and then we'll be done. I think I see a chicken in the coop. <laughs> yep, <laughs> she probably wants to lay an egg. Oh, two chickens in the coop. You girls are crazy. Now that we have the coop all cleaned out, I want to put down a little bit of stall dry. It's diatomaceous earth and whatever that other word is. The coop floor is a little damp from being covered in frozen bedding all winter long that finally to thawed. So we're going to put a little bit of this down and then we'll put the bedding on top of that. I'm not gonna spread that. We'll let the chickens peck through it, scratch through it, and spread it out the way they want it. It'll give them a job to do, they'll enjoy it. I think that should make the chickens happy. Better hurry up and get the fence put back up, they're already escaping. Now, like in the area where I picked up all the hay and straw we had outside for them this winter. Yep, she's in there. That'll give them something new to check out for a while. I'm going to go get rid of this last load of manure that needs to get composted. And we'll be right back. It's hard to catch it, but all the goats are playing with each other. Heard me open the door and now they stopped.
hard to catch the goats playing together nicely. They do it quite a bit, but every time they see the camera coming, they stop for some reason. You girls all playing good down there? They are. How you doing, Willow? What do you got, two more weeks now? And we'll be on baby countdown. Do you find your cat or did your cat find you? Both. Both? I'm pretty sure he's purring. He's purring? I think so. Oh, hi, Willow. Hope's normally afraid of Figaro. Yeah. Not today. Not. Is hope. Yeah. Hey. I can't get over how much the frost has lifted this post up out of the ground. That fence was level. We used to be able to latch the gate here, and now it's there. You staying down here, Figaro? Or are you gonna come over to New York City with us? I'll probably find a way over to New York City. Olivia got her braces adjusted the other day, so tonight for dinner she's requested something soft, huh? Yeah. You want some soup? Yes. I don't blame you. Here comes Figaro. Yep. You girls got the wood shavings all spread out yet? Huh? Looks like you started to spread them. Not done yet. They laid all their eggs in that one nesting box. Ten eggs, nice. Hey, we'll rinse off our dirty boots. Get some of that mud off. Girls want some kitchen scraps. Come on. Oop. There you go. One of the reasons we keep the chickens in the greenhouse during the winter time is so we can throw our food scraps in here. If we have two feet of snow, it's a lot easier to walk out to the greenhouse and give the chickens our kitchen scraps out here than it is going all the way out to the pasture. Figaro's lurking out there in the greenhouse. Tonight we're gonna make a chicken noodle soup with a little bit of a twist. Normally, when we make soup, we make it with leftover chicken, but we didn't cook the whole chicken up this week. A couple of weeks ago, I butchered some roosters we had here in the homestead. So we have some chicken tenders and some chicken breasts from them. They were about 20 to 25 weeks old. Bard Rock roosters, so they're heritage breeds. 
So they're on the older side where the meat birds that we're raising right now, they'll grow to like a five pound carcass in eight weeks. These were 20 plus weeks old. And this is the size of a chicken breast from a heritage raised meat bird. They're not very big. So if you're gonna be raising heritage breeds for meat, just be aware of that. Been having the pan preheating. So it's nice and warm. We'll add some olive oil. And we'll fry up our chicken breast. Pot on saute mode. Add in a little bit of olive oil. Then we'll chop up our onion. that dog probably make a nice pillow? Does that tail wag mean yes? Tana's over here sleeping in the sun. Does that feel good? Yeah. We're gonna cook up an Asian pasta to go with the soup. It's a really thin noodle, so I don't like cooking it in the instant pot, because if you do, it can get a little mushy and start to break apart.
hoping that we have a couple more chicks hatch out overnight tonight and tomorrow maybe we'll have a few more in the incubator we can get them all over to the brooder but it's just so much fun this time of the year there's so much new life going on i can't wait till we can stop planting the garden and getting everything going on i'm sure a lot of y'all who have homesteads elsewhere in different climates are probably already starting to plant your garden and get your pigs probably a lot of you are starting to mow your lawn I'm thinking we're gonna be ready to do that maybe three weeks or so but we're really excited to get the barn going we gotta wait a little bit longer we'll be getting some gravel brought in and uh, man it can't come fast enough and then we're gonna be building I love building projects it's just so much fun it's nice seeing new things going up creating stuff with your hands and I don't know it's, to me there's just something to being able to build something I just feel like it's one of the things I was made to do. I was made to create. I like to embrace that. I guess maybe that's one of my uniquenesses, one of my talents. So whatever your uniqueness, your talent is, embrace that. Find a way to go after it. Thanks for coming along on our journey with us, and we'll see you guys right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.